So in this video, we're going to look at a simple example where we test for concavity in the case of a third degree polynomial function. So the example says, determine the intervals on which the function f of x is concave down or concave up. So f of x is a third degree polynomial. The graph of f of x is right here. And I've included with that graph the graph of its first and second derivatives. And we can see visually that the, that the function is going to be concave down here and concave up here. We can visually see that the inflection point is, lo looks like it's located at 0, 1. And we can see that when the graph is concave down, the, deri the second derivative of the function is negative, indicating that we have a decreasing derivative. And we can see that when the graph is concave up, the second derivative is positive, indicating that we have a con uh, an increasing derivative or concave up graph. So what we want to do is step through using calculus to come to these conclusions rather than using graphical evidence. So the first step in determining the intervals over which a function is concave up or concave down, the first step is to look at the function and identify the domain of the function. And when I look at this, I see that I have a third degree polynomial and I know that the domain of polynomials is from negative infinity to infinity. That's step one. What's the domain of the function I'm working with? Step two is to locate that inflection point. We want the x coordinate of the inflection point, but we don't want to do it graphically. We want to do it using calculus. So what we need to recognize is that the inflection point is going to happen when one of two things is true. Either the derivative is going to sorry, either the second derivative is going to be equal to zero or the second derivative is going to be undefined. So we start with our function f of x, one third x cubed minus x plus one. We then calculate the first derivative, which is going to be an x squared minus one. And we then calculate the second derivative which is 2x. And we calculate the second derivative because the inflection point will either be when the second derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. And we see here that 2x is never undefined, so we set 2x equal to 0. And we find that x equals 0 is the x-coordinate of the inflection point. If I needed to know the output that goes with it, I could plug 0 into the original function and see that f of 0 is 1, so the inflection points at 0, 1, but we really just need the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate of the inflection point is going to be used to break ourselves into two test intervals. So we combine the locations of the inflection points with the domain of the original function to establish our test intervals. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. So we're going to run our first test interval from negative infinity up to the first inflection point location. So from negative infinity to zero. And then we're going to pick up at that inflection point location and run to infinity. So we combine those two pieces of information to establish our test intervals. The graph of the function f of x will be concave down when the second derivative is negative and concave up if the second derivative is positive. So what we need within the intervals that we've established are test values, values that we can plug into the second derivative to determine whether the second derivative is positive or negative. So in this case, we want to notice that x equal to negative 1 is a number on the interval from negative infinity to 0, and x equal to positive 1 gives us a number on the interval from 0 to infinity. And then we just plug those test numbers into our second derivative. So I have f double prime of x equaling twice x. So plug the test value negative 1 into the second derivative, which gives us a negative 2, which is less than 0. In other words, the second derivative on the interval from negative infinity to zero is going to be negative or less than zero. 
And our conclusion is, if that second derivative is negative, we have a graph that is concave down. So concave down. And remember, the reason for the second derivative telling us the concavity of the graph is, if the graph was concave down, we knew that the tangent lines to the graph had to change from positive to zero to negative over that region, which meant that the, the first derivative is decreasing from positive to negative. And because the second derivative tells us the rate of change of the derivative, we know the derivative has to be negative if the slope of the tangent lines are decreasing. And then we simply, for the second interval, we take the test value f double prime at one. We t plug in our second test value. So we get two times one is two, which is clearly greater than zero. So the sign of the second derivative on the interval from zero to infinity is going to be positive, which means our graph is concave up on that interval. And then we want to draw our conclusion. We want to come over here and say, hey, we're concave down. And in this case, it's only on one interval, but there could be a, a, a union of intervals over which this is true. So we're concave down as long as x is an element of the interval from negative infinity to 0. That was our first test interval. And we have a graph that is concave up as long as x is an element of the interval from 0 to infinity. If we had multiple intervals, then we would just do the union of intervals.